Seeing Miyagi hold her knees, trying to stay warm and sleep, I pitied her for having to deal with the selfish actions of an idiot like me. I stood up slowly so I wouldn't wake Miyagi and wandered around, soon finding an empty community center. Certainly it would have to wake up a girl who slept even lighter than me, but Miyagi feigned sleep the whole time. Perhaps it was only a dream founded in desire, in times of despondency. Those are a common occurrence. I knew it was Miyagi, because of her smell. Even in summer, she smelled like a clear winter morning. I don't think it lasted any more than a minute. Miyagi seemed to whisper something, but I couldn't make it out over the rain. In my drowsiness, I thought, just how much has Miyagi helped me? How cornered would I feel now? if Miyagi weren't there. But that's just why. I shouldn't trouble her any further. She's kind to me. Because I'm going to die soon. It doesn't mean she has any affection for me. I'll just die, quietly. I'll go back to my usual self-sufficient modest life, where I don't count on anyone for anything. Like a cat. I'll expire silently and in secret, so I secretly vowed. In the morning, after a four hour trek from the community center, we finally reached the apartment. My body was drenched in sweat and my feet were blistered. The shower. You going first? Nah, I should probably just refuse. I'll try to get out quick at least. My understanding was that Miyagi was free to take showers and eat only while I was sleeping. Mr. Kusunoki. Mr. Kusunoki, are you sleeping? I ask, of course, because you appear to be feigning sleep. And if you are indeed, I would like to say, if you did so out of concern for me, it'd be nice. Good night. I'll be using your shower. Just as an experiment, I tried imitating the way Miyagi slept, but as long as I sat there, Sleep just wouldn't come. What are you doing there? You should sleep in bed. That should be my line. It's ridiculous sleeping like this. Ridiculous as it may be, I am used to it. I'm sleeping on the left side from now on. No matter what, I won't intrude on the right side. Won't even look. Would be a perfect place for you to observe me up close. It's up to you if you want to use it or not. But I'll sleep on the left at any rate. Are you still half asleep, Mr. Kusunoki? in my usual spot but thank you very much at the ATM I withdrew the last of my part-time money <sighs> running out of things to do I've done everything on my things to do before I die list so now what do whatever you like even you must have hobbies of some sort yes yeah they were listening to music and reading, but now that I think about it, those two were just means by which to keep living. Now that there's no longer a need to force myself to keep going, I don't find them as necessary as before. Do you not appreciate anything more on the simple side? 
Do you like walking and counting railroad ties, say, or playing games on ancient arcade cabinets? Those are awfully specific. Let me guess, you observed guys like that? Yes. There was even one who spent his last month of life lying in the back of a pickup truck and looking up at the sky. A rather nice way to pass the time. It's a fresh feeling, watching the scenery fly backward. Hey, could you tell me more like that? I can tell you plenty when we return to the apartment, but you will appear rather suspicious if you keep talking here. Back home, Miyagi did tell me more, as if she were reading a storybook to a child. She told anecdotes. No matter how stupid or pointless the story, when it came from Miyagi's lips, it felt very warm and soothing. The next day, while folding cranes with the remaining origami paper, I thought about what I should do. Simply keeping on like this may not be so bad either. Yeah, wouldn't really mind just drowning in paper cranes. <laughs> oh. What is it? Um, it's really stupid, but I just remembered something that I can really truly say I like. Then please, say it. I... love... vending machines. What about them do you like? I don't know, can't really place it myself. But ever since I was a kid, I wanted to be a vending machine when I grew up. Hmm? Um, just checking, but by vending machines, you mean coffee selling, soda selling machines like this one? Yeah, but also cigarettes, ice cream, hamburgers, udon beer, liquor, cup noodles. Vending machines provide it all. And Japan's the land of vending machines. And so, you have a love for vending machines. Yeah, that's right. I like to use them. And I even like just looking at them. Hmm. Well, that's a unique hobby. It was a stupid hobby. But I think I do understand. My burning desire to become a vending machine? No, that I don't think I can ever understand. But, you see, vending machines are always there. Simply provide money and they will always offer warmth. They offer more than the sum of their products. They offer a clear function with a sense of invariance and permanence. Wow, that's something. He said what I wanted to say a lot better than I could. Thank you. Vending machines are important to us observers as well, as they don't ignore us. So then, it's all well and good to know that you like them, but what would you actually want to do? Well, I'll have to explain something else I like. Every time I come to this cigarette shop, I'm reminded of a part from Paul Loster's smoke. The cigar shop owner goes out in front every morning, without fail, to take a photo. That challenge to the idea of meaning really struck me. So yeah, I want to imitate him and take photos that are meaningless at a glance. Just keep taking crude photos of ordinary vending machines in a way anybody could do. I'm unsure how to word it, but I think I like that too. And so, my vending machine tours began. Whenever I took a picture, I tried to get the stuff around the vending machine in view as well. What kind of area the machine was in, and in what condition, that's what I wanted to capture. There were many vending machines which I'd walked by countless times, yet I'd always overlooked. Discoveries like that made my heart dance. At the start of each day, I'd head for the photo studio. During the 30 minutes it took for the film to develop, I would go have breakfast. At the end of the day, I'd lay out the photos developed that morning and carefully put each one into an album. One day, the owner of the photo studio saw me laughing with Miyagi and asked, I was wondering, is there someone there? That's right, a girl named Miyagi. Hello. Her job's to observe me. I see. He readily accepted the invisible Miyagi's existence. So then, these strange photos... They're actually photos of her? Oh no, they're just photos of vending machines. The owner's face told how little he understood. Well, keep at it then, he said. What are you doing? Oh, just figured I'd take one after what the photo guy said. It will only appear as a meaningless photo of a bike to others. 
All my pictures are meaningless to others. Of course, people like the photo studio owner were the minority. I'd be concerned if they weren't. Sorry to make you wait. Alright, let's go. The man who lived next door shot me a look of disgust. Well, not like I cared what anybody thought. <laughs>